All right, I have mentioned several times that the kind of math we do with um, pH and pOH calculations, concentration of hydrogen ions and hydronium ions in a first semester chemistry class at the high school level, the kind of calculations we do only works as long as it's a strong monoprotic acid, okay? And then when you get to AP chemistry or you get to college chemistry, you've got to do more complex types of calculations, all right? But let's look at that a minute. Let's say, remember that an acid, if we use a general formula for an acid, we said this is the hydrogen ion on the front, and this is any kind of anion for an acid. It could be sul uh, sulfate, hydrogen sulfate, it could be acetate, it could be chloride, anything to make it an acid. Any negative ion will make this an acid. Well, the HA, if we put it with water using um, the uh, Bronsted-Lowry theory, then this hydrogen is going to go over here and join up with the, with the water molecule, making hydronium. And then you're going to have the anion by itself. Okay, And that's, that's a formula, or a general formula, for the dissociation of an acid that works for any kind of acid. As long as it's a strong monoprotic acid, then whatever the concentration of the acid is will also be the concentration of this, because all of this always goes to all of this. We don't have any of this left over. But if it's a weak acid, remember the weak, the dilution of the weak acid or the neutralization of the weak acid we did in here? We found out it took a lot more base to neutralize it because a lot of the weak acid never breaks up or doesn't break up until you put more base in there. Anyway, remember that? Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's what that was all about. Well, if it's a weak acid, then not all of this becomes this. So just because we calculate the molar concentration of this, it won't tell us what this is. This will always be less than that. For strong acids, Strong monoprotic acids, the concentration you, concentration you calculate for the acid will be the concentration you get for the hydronium, but not for weak acids. Okay, let's look at acetic acid. Here's acetic acid. So we're going to put acetic acid in water. Here's our water molecule. Here we're going to make um, the hydrogen going to come off and join up with the hydronium ion. And the anion you have left is the remainder after the hydrogen comes off here. And that's the CH3, that's the acetate ion, CH3CO2, one negative. Okay? <clears throat> now, the way you calculate the amount of hydronium ions for something like this is using what's called a, or an acid ionization constant. We need to know the acid ionization constant and the A means acid, okay? And this K is a constant. And this needs to be for specifically for acetic acid, okay? Because each acid ionization constant is different for every kind of acid. Okay, so let's let's look that up. And here's a whole list of um, acid ionization constants. And here's acetic acid down here, and it says its acid ionization constant is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay. All right. Um, now we need to know. Now this is the value. It's just like the kW has a value, but it also ha there's also an expression for kW. You remember that? kW equals the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration. It's on your test references. Right? There it is, right there. There's the expression. This part right here is the expression between my fingers. Here's the value. Okay? This has a value, but it also has an expression. And the expression for a Ka is products over reactants. Always products over reactants. Molar concentrations. Now, here's something else you need to know. Remember, if we were doing this in the Arrhenius theory, we wouldn't have water in the equation. And instead of hydronium, we just have H+, plus, right? So including water in our expression would be different for Bronsted-Lowry than it is for Arrhenius, and they shouldn't be. Okay, now there's a lot of reasons why, but we generally leave out the molar concentration of water. It doesn't make any sense anyway, because the molar concentration of water in water is what? One. That makes sense? I mean, you can't, you, you just dissolve the water in water. How do you get a concentration from that? You don't. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the expression for Ka is always the molar concentration of the products multiplied together 
over the molar concentration of the original acid. Okay? We're part of the way there. But now we need what's called an ice table. Okay, I need an ice table. Well, here's how that works. Here's our acid, HCH3CO2. Okay? And we're going to call, we're going to, this, this, this breaks down into those things. So over on the other side of the table, we're going to have this hydronium ion concentration and the acetate ion concentration. Because those are the parts of our expression here. Got it? All right. Um, let's see. We had calculated a concentration for an acid yesterday, didn't we? What was it for uh, perchloric acid we did it for? What was that 0.599? Was that the one we did yesterday? Yep. Okay. Let's just say we start out with a 0 0.559 molar concentration of the acetic acid. So we're going to do all the calculations and find out how many moles per liter there are. Okay? And when we first dissolve it in there, we're going to theoretically think about this as the we've got all this and none of this has happened yet. Okay, theoretically thinking about it this way. We've dissolved this in here and nothing has been dissociated yet. You with me? Okay, so initially, we've got no concentration of hydronium and acetate. Initially, before it breaks apart. So that's initial. Got it? Now, how much is going to change? I don't know. So some amount of this stuff is going to go away. That makes sense? The amount that this goes away is the same amount we get of this. Every mole of this that breaks up, we get one of these and one of these, right? So whatever amount of this goes away, that's the amount of these two things we get. C for change. Okay? At equilibrium then, ice, the amount of this stuff we have is 0 0.559 molar minus X. The amount of hydrogen, hydronium ions we get is X, and acid ions is X. Now we have things we can plug into that equation. Just plug them in. That's all you've got to do. We've got 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, then, is equal to hydronium ion concentration is X, Acetate ion concentration is also X. Well, I could just say X squared, right? The acid ion concentration, or acid concentration is this amount right here. 0 0.559 minus X. When we find X, we'll find how much hydronium ion concentration we have. If you've got a graphing calculator, you've got a solve function. How many of you have got a graphing calculator? Okay. You have a solve function. I'm going to tell you a little secret, guys. You can either do this the long and hard way, or you can learn to use that solve function on the calculator.